Right. The same is uh, explaining in this slide. This is called web centric because it separates the SQL RDBMS from the web services. Why means RDBMS doesn't support many to many directly. It is the reason it has been separated. Okay. I hope so because you know that, right? RDBMS so, doesn't separate a many to many relation. In in case if you want to go to many to many, we have one choice. You can go with many to one relationship, then one to many. An indirect uh, structure you have to define that. Okay. Okay, so that is called web centric here, and uh, and this is called database centric. Database centric ultimately depends upon the database services on the web or file application services. It separates all different differently, and it will whenever the data fill up is coming from the different planning models, it will do the same for the BPC. So that is the database centric tier, uh, and here we have a configuration options for the uh, triple uh, for this triple thing uh, that you can. Karthik, in, in such scenarios where, where you need uh, like uh, multiple uh, servers, is it recommended to have a source systems like any BI systems, multiple BI systems and do the consolidation or is it recommended to like this to have no, multiple? No, no. Uh, no, yeah, good question. Actually, uh, here the intention of multiple server means, you know, BPC uh, is a such an environment where different kinds of data, I told you, I mean, structure, structure, both. So a client might get a data from a structured data, and he might get it from SAP R3. He might get a SAP BI, and something you know like from another Microsoft Analysis data. So four things I have to club means different servers I have to get the data. Okay. Is it not? Right. Right. Uh, so then, then that type of requirements. See, if I am saying the four things, for example, I need a structured data from SAP. SAP, I am saying in some reports are there, so I can I can use the reporting services. Again, I have an analysis based MS Excel is there. I have to go with analysis services. Again, with Bob J SQL services. Again, with his separate separate things are there. Maybe file is there. So I want to integrate all these things at with different different servers. And you know, like that multi and that multi server concept is will be useful in that case. Right. I mean, that's what uh, my thing is. Like, uh, uh, BW is a data warehouse and where it can talk to all these uh, multiple Yeah, services. ultimately. It's an ultimate data source, you know, uh, and an ultimate uh, data storage bin where num n number of data services we can provide yeah. on report. It, it could be BW, it could be data services or any extract, I mean, any data warehouse tool. I mean, they, they, mm. have, a, they have a capability of talking to all the services. Yeah, where, yeah. Where we can uh, consolidate everything into one database. And yes, have right, the, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, um, trying to think of a good solution, uh, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it will be a good solution. Multi-tier is always a good solution. As I told earlier, we should be take care of the server-based technology and authentications until or unless we don't disturb it. It works fine, very, very fine. Got it. Good. Okay. Yeah. Clear? So next, this is a tire authentication. I told you that for client web server, we should currently support using the Windows Basic NLDM Cadbros authentication. These are the basic standard tools for the authentications. Mm -hmm. Okay, application server we have to follow, and the database tier we have SQL services analysis file. So if you use a service level accounts to access resources, you know, like we have a service level account because if, uh, for example, take Unilever client, Unilever client, you know, different different accounts will be there, like uh, food services account, uh, cosmetics account. And you know, like it depends upon the business. Those accounts have different authentication. So each and every individual will have its own user ID password before you log into a particular data sheet who you are using at the database tier. So these are the authentications you have to tackle when the tier authentication. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so um, yeah, tell me. Sorry, Karthik. Yeah, I mean, uh, for any mobile technologies, like, do we need a, a, another plugin or the can we use the web services and? Uh... Hello. Yeah, Karthik. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mobile technology we have to separately integrate Shravan. It doesn't directly. Uh, that is the reason, you know, for BlackBerry we have. Uh, when you consider the Bob J environment, for, we have a separate thing for BlackBerry. We have a separate thing for Apple iPod. We have a separate thing for Samsung uh, technology. Because why this means? Uh, it's be, even though it's an in, uh, in, uh, internet. They have intra in, intranet based things that have been developed for the Bob J because there is separate device tools that they have separate uh, things they will uh, involve in it. So it directly can't access any direct internet web. That is the reason we uh, built a mobile based technology, not an internet based technology. That is called mobile based technology. Okay. Okay. So we can we can easily do that, but uh, we need some integrations here again for the BTC also. We can't do direct integration with a simple click or like in a Bob J environment for the dashboard. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, yep. this we don't require. These are the client hardware requirements, software requirements. And, 
and this is a development environment. So, in a development environment, as I said, to integral part of success implementation. So, we need to providing environment for all these things. You can see this testing third party software updates. It can be there's a staging area for new BPC releases. We can test the BPC application safety and charges. Um, and all these things, you know, production development environments, you no, know, they have a good identical in hardware or configuration, whatever we do, that we have to take care of in the developer yeah. environment. Right. This is the reason why we need a BPC 10.0. Okay. And usually, you know, the common client scenarios like test, UAT, that is the uh, quality and productions. Right. You know, the same with the BPC also. Any SAP is a common panda, we have a three environments, landscape is common. Mm -hmm. Yep. All these things. And, um, and the results are recovery and when you consider the high availability. In this, you have the good ability to restore the system back to work in order in a timely manner. Because we include the recovery of data for hardware and software. We include the you know like a data recovery plan, that is a DR plan with a time specified maximum acceptable recovery times. So whenever the failures are there, we there is no need of a you know like there is no uh, words of panic. We can easily recover it, but it takes time. Uh, and we have to be very, in production systems, we have to be very careful for the downstream and upstream systems and we have to alert all the guys at the same time. Okay. So that's it. These are the disaster recovery possibilities, like when your design is then based on sizing and exact replica or less performance and access to the time it takes to recover, as I told now. And then for the user backups, we have to need to backup based on the time frame that you have been allotted to the data. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, like uh, in our uh, right now, BP systems are automatically taking a backup data in their uh, database servers. So whenever the data on the client system it was been gone, it was been maintained automatically a separate console uh, in our uh, memory of databases. So there is no worry about the data. Oh, I mean, is, is that a tool or how it does that? I mean, no, the architecture of ten point one was designed like that. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when it comes to the high availability possibilities, you know, uh, complete redundancy for each component in BPC uh, technology stacks, we have these things like Microsoft Servers 2000 Pies, uh, BPC File Shares, Web Service, all these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the clustering, you know, that anyways, we'll go with a uh, uh, system based advanced uh, administrative network, it is a SAN. So we'll go with uh, two node clusters with the, uh, two SQL services that we can integrate in a uh, simple uh, network and that network will directly uh, maintain it to the main stack of the PPC. So that okay. uh, clustering will be possible with different uh, data productions and high availability. So we can maintain good level of data. So you can see the diagram. We have different services. Two services data. I can directly integrate to one SAN and from that SAN it will be directly integrated to the BPC where we can fetch the data plans accordingly. Okay. And this is a 2000 uh, uh, analysis services clustering and this is report services with the load balancing devices. Uh, we have to use some third party tools for the reporting services. There's FI, Big P, Cisco, network load balancing, these are things. Mm -hmm. And uh, remaining with BPC web services and all these things. This is a multi-server environment example. One more example using SAN. You can see this. Uh, we can have in general, you know, like uh, in this SAN we can integrate to here also. Mm -hmm. with a load balancing service. So it might or else we can integrate to here also, to both okay. of these. Mm -hmm. Anyway, our architecture depends upon our requirement again. So this is a BPC, uh, uh, one second, let me guess. This is our 2007 technical architecture. Are you able to view? I'll make yeah, it uh, I can see it in my thing. If you can, or make the explorer as a full screen, I mean. I am making video, I think so you are getting that. Okay. Is it fine now? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Thirty nine. I would rather check in my my PDF. Thirty nine. No, no, I want to explain you on this. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes, you see one second. Let me go with this hundred and twenty. This is fine. You're seeing the architecture, right, completely? Right. Yep. This is the complete technical architecture. See, uh, we have a different, different people are here. Let's see, this is a down to up scenario, not a uh, up to down scenario. Let's come from the downstairs. See, here we have the MD, MIDDB, there's a master database is there. Then we are, we are getting the data from the data warehousing. 
okay mm -hmm. using the odbc connections or odbo these are the these two are the connections which are passing the data as a connectors then mm -hmm. in the uh, the data going into the dotnet or linux environment where a listener is you know uh, going to store some processes working the databases olap database all these things will be uh, mutually shared here why this uh, these are doing here means the data warehousing that we are getting the data is a bw data so we need a olap database here so here the olap thing is uh, maintaining here and the other structured data is of what database it was being maintaining and the stored procedures anyway we are we have to maintain because when we are dealing with concept called odbc or odbo we need a stored procedure right because uh, these are the stored procedure concepts we just they are you know, like for sql based things most most probably so we have to go with the a pass listeners so this listener you know nothing but listener means nothing but he just takes the data and stores in immediately whenever want it he just push the data that's what mm -hmm. he okay. pushes the data using the this tcp ip control okay? okay tcp ip control again means nothing but because of dotnet framework we have used this protocol why okay. means because of dotnet framework again tcp ip what it does it will go to the another pip listener pip listener means internet protocol listener he is nothing but he is an application service listener pas means mm -hmm. Okay, so again here, uh, uh, before this listener counts, uh, this information is passed to him. Now he checks here. Like here, what happens means a pilot database, whatever is been the SQL system, he checks whether the data is you know like uh, getting the uh, getting the data is fine or not. Whether uh, it is a fresh data, that is the data that has been passed from the past listener is fresh data. It will combine the data with this, and uh, if there any data that want to pass to the next level, it will uh, pass the combined data, or else it will check the data with the acknowledgement, and finally it will send to the next level. Mm -hmm. Again, .NET. That is the reason we go with the TCP IP protocol. Now again here. Now we have a set of Java, Java, you know, like application logics here. We have to go with JPIP authentications, authorizations, pilot work course, pilot work servers, uh, and their configurations. Again, for authorization, we need a LDAP server. Who are the users? Who need to who need to authenticate? Which report? And all the stuff. It will be dealt here. And finally, this will be uh, separately for the uh, authentications and the server at the core level. Again, uh, here the web services will be maintained here for separate consoles, and all these things were again generated to. This level, because at this level we check for the web services and the authentications. At this level, we'll go with the uh, SQL-based com combinations. At this level, we'll go with the OLAP-based database, uh, OLAP-based and the general database uh, uh, data manipulation. So all these things now pass to the next level that is called MIS IS. That is the uh, our Microsoft Information Server, where you have a you know like it is Jakarta IS filter. It's a local filter for the customer requirement. It is not a standard environment. So uh, again, uh, for this the data from the MSN management will come. So we have to uh, uh, 